Hi Cubbies, this is Miss Verna talking to you tonight and I, I just am so, I miss you so much and so I wanted to come in and just um, have a little story for you and a little sing time and so Ashlyn and Gracie have come with me so that they can sing some of your favorite songs. So let's hear them. Hi Cubbies, so we're going to have song time, okay? So we're going to do two songs, and the first one we're going to do is we're going to do the fishy song. So everyone get your little fishies ready. And let's <laughs> All the little fishies swimming in the water, swimming in the water, swimming in the water. All the little fishies swimming in the water, bubble, bubble. Bubble pop! Good job. Okay, the next song we're gonna do is we're gonna do the Lord's Army, okay? Make sure you sing with us. So, <laughs> I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's Army. Yes, sir! I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. Thanks for singing with us guys. We really miss you and we'll see you when we come back. Bye. Hi boys and girls. Hey, it's story time. I heard you're singing. Oh my goodness, you were singing so loud that I thought the wall was going to fall down, but there's no hole in it, so we got to sing louder next time. But tonight I want to tell you a story, and um, it's been a while since we've been together, and I really miss you. And so I wanted to first remember we do two things when we come to Cubbies. We talk about our two favorite things that we come to learn. And so if you're sitting with your brothers and sisters or your mom and dad, maybe you could teach them this, but tell me the number one thing that we come to Cubbies to learn. And that is God loved us and sent his son. Can you do that one more time with me so that maybe everyone can join you? It's God loved us and sent his son. Okay, the second thing that we come to Cubbies to learn. What is it? Think hard. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves you and he loves me. Never forget that. That's what we came for. But tonight our story is about uh, the verse in your book that we were going to do next, but we haven't been together for a while, is God is the king over all the earth. Now, I want you to think really hard and the last time we were at Cubbies, we talked about a, a king that was chosen and he was out in the sheep pen. And so I'm going to show you a story to remind you of last, last week's story. Do you remember when Samuel came and he was supposed to choose a king for God's people, the Israelites? And he chose someone that no one expected. So I'll read this quick story to you. God sent Samuel to the house of a man named Jesse to choose a new king. When Samuel looked at seven of Jesse's sons, God said to him, don't look at how tall or how handsome they are. Are, all, are these all of your sons? Samuel asked. And Jesse said, no, but my youngest son is out in the sheep pasture. His name is David. God said to Samuel, David is the one I have chosen. So remember, they thought David was just taking care of the sheep and he wasn't important, but that's who God chose. So tonight, Cubbies, when you look at me, you see I have my Awana shirt on. And when I put my Awana shirt on at home, my husband, Mr. Tim, knew when he saw my shirt that I was coming to church and I was going to read a cubby story. But he couldn't see my heart. Mr. Tim couldn't know what I was thinking and he didn't know in my heart whether I was excited or scared or nervous. 
but he saw my Awana shirt, so he knew I was coming to Awana. And that's how it was for David. God chose David because of his heart. God knew that David loved him, and all the other men thought that someone else should be king, but God chose David. So that was the earthly king. Now I want to tell you a story about one story that we talked about at Christmas. This is going to be the king that God sent us. Now Jesus is going to be our king. So just help me remember. The ruler of the land, August Caesar, made a new law to count all the people, and everyone had to register in their hometown. Now remember, he was a wicked king. So Joseph and Mary went to their hometown, Bethlehem. The town was full of people, and there was no place for Mary and Joseph to sleep. Finally, Joseph found a place for them where the animals were kept. And that's where God's baby son was born, in a barn. Remember we talked about that? His first bed was on the hay in the box where the animals eat. Now this baby is the baby that we talked about, Jesus. He came because he loves you. Well, we said Jesus grew and grew, and he got to be about as old as your dad's. Probably about that old. So around 30 and he worked hard with his dad being a carpenter. But Jesus was really God, remember? And God said that he needed to die for you and for me to forgive our sins. So this is the next part that we, I want you to hear. Jesus, when he was older, was killed by some angry men who did not like him. And he was killed on a cross because he loves you and because he wanted to save you from sins or the bad things we do or think in our heart. So here's the story about Jesus on the cross. Pilate's soldiers took Jesus and put a crown of thorns on his head and they made fun of him. Now I want to show you something. In my hat box I have a crown of thorns and this is so sharp that if I touch it too much it would prick my fingers and I would bleed. But Jesus wore this crown of thorns. They put it on his head, and they pushed it on his head to hurt him and make him bleed. And it hurt Jesus very much, but he wore this crown of thorns when he was going to the cross. It wasn't very fun. It hurt, but Jesus did it because he loved you. So they led Jesus out of the city to a place called Golgotha to be killed on a cross. And at nine o'clock in the morning, the soldiers nailed Jesus to the cross. They also put two robbers on each side of Jesus, one on the right and one on the left. And that was a scary time and a very sad time, but Jesus loved you so much that he, he wanted to do that for you. But there's a surprise coming. A rich man named Joseph of Arimathea had a new tomb where he had planned to be buried, and he took Jesus' body from the cross and put it in his own empty tomb. And a tomb is kind of like a dark cave where they put Jesus' body. Joseph and, his, and Jesus' friends wrapped his body in strips of linen and laid it carefully in the tomb. Roman soldiers came to guard the tomb because they wanted no one to take Jesus. They rolled a huge stone over the door to seal it, and that way it would show if anyone tried to move the stone. Well, we know that after three days, the happy part of the story is that Jesus rose from the tomb, God rolled the stone away, and he lifted Jesus' body up and Jesus was alive. And when Jesus was alive, he came and he showed himself to all his friends. This says Jesus is alive. He came and he walked around the earth and he talked to his friends. And he was with them for a few days. He did some things with them and he taught them and he ate with them. And then... The last thing that happened when Jesus was on the earth is he said goodbye to all his friends. And he, God was going to take him up into heaven, and that's where he is now. Remember, we always say Jesus, because he's up in heaven, Jesus loves me. 
So Jesus went up, in the he up into heaven to be with his Father God, and he's saving a place for you. So let's read about it. Jesus led his followers a little way out of town. He prayed for his followers, and while he was praying, he started to rise up into heaven, and then a cloud hid him from his followers. As everyone was standing there looking, two angels appeared beside them and said, Jesus has been taken away from you. He will come back in the clouds just like he went away. Well, I brought one more surprise. Remember this really, that's a really owie crown. But when Jesus went up to heaven, this is the crown he wears now. Jesus is the king over all the earth. And he wears a crown with jewels. It's beautiful and golden, and he's waiting there for you. And he watches over you every day, and he's waiting to take you into heaven with him. So when you think of Jesus being the king over all the earth, remember, first he wore this crown for you, and it hurt. But it was so worth it because he loves you. But now he wears this crown, and he's waiting to be your savior and your friend. Hi Cubbies, we're back for two more songs. So the first one we're gonna do is the animal song and we're gonna start off with a lion, okay? Everyone, tell me what a lion says. Roar! Roar. That's right. All right, here we go. The lion in the jungle goes roar, roar, roar. Roar, roar, roar. Roar, roar, roar. The lion in the jungle goes roar, roar, roar. All day. The snake. Everyone tell me what a snake sounds like. That's right. And right. snakes live in the grass. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Alright, here we go. The, the snake, snake in the grass goes The snake in the grass goes all day long. And our last one we're gonna do is a cow. Everyone tell me what a cow makes. Tell me what sound a cow makes, sorry. Moo. Moo. <laughs> and, and they live on the farm. Yes. <laughs> Alright, here we go. The cow on the farm goes moo, moo, moo. Moo, moo, moo. Moo, moo, moo. The cow on the farm goes moo, moo, moo. All day long. Job, guys. Now we're gonna do the Cubby song, and everyone knows this one. So everybody, make sure you're really loud. We want to break down the wall, okay? <laughs> we are one of Cubbies. We're happy all day long. We know that Jesus loves us. That's why we sing this song. We hop because we're happy, and we jump and shout for joy. Cause Jesus is a friend to us, he loves each girl and boy. Thanks for singing with us again, Cubbies, and again, we miss you very much, and we can't wait to sing with you again in person. Bye. Hey, boys and girls, before we go, I wanted to read you just one fun story, just a story that just reminds us of fun, some fun things that we like to do. This book is called Hello, Son, and it's about a little girl named Emma, who is ready to have a birthday. Now stop and think about your birthday. How excited you get when you wake up. And maybe your favorite thing that you would like to have on your birthday. Something to eat, something to do. I like to have birthday cake. What kind do you like? I like chocolate cake with white frosting. That's my favorite. So think about your birthday and Get ready to hear a story about a little girl named Emma. Good morning, son, little Emma said. Today will be finer than Mama's fresh bread. I'm finally five and the whole world is mine. What a day for my party. God made the sun shine. I think I'll wear lilac. No, blue would be best. She pulled out her ribbons and left quite a mess. But pink is so pretty. I love yellow, too. I'll wear every one of them. That's what I'll do. 
She ran down the stairs, taking two at a time. She barked like a puppy, then roared like a lion. Hello, darling Daddy and Mama and Ben. She kissed her dog, Princess, again and again. Today will be perfect. The sun is so bright. I asked God for sunshine, not showers, last night. We'll dance round the apple tree. Then for a treat, we'll sit on the grass and we'll eat, eat, eat. The weatherman says it will rain, Daddy said. By lunchtime, the sun might be hiding its head. But we'll all have such fun. Let it rain, sleet, or snow. My baby is five. Well, where did those years go? But I asked God for sun. I was very specific. To see it rain now, why the thought is horrific. It would ruin my party one drop at a time. I asked God for sunshine, so sunshine is mine. But soon black stormy clouds painted the sky. Emma looked out the window and cried. The puddles grew bigger, then bigger, then big. The wind shook the apple tree, jiggity jig. I'm not going to pray anymore, she declared. I asked God for sunshine. I don't think he cares. Perhaps he's forgotten today is my day. I'm angry and sad, that's all I can say. Come here, little angel. Come sit on my knee, and Daddy will rock like a boat on the sea. I know that you're sad, but I know this is true. God didn't forget you. He really loves you. Perhaps there's a little boy not far away who asked God for rain on this very same day or a farmer who needs rain to fall on his corn, or a family of ducks who were feeling too warm. But God loves you more than a daddy can tell. He heard every prayer, not a single one fell. And whether we've sunshine or snowfall or sleet, today will be perfect with your dancing feet. He prayed with his daughter and said, Amen. Then the clouds in the sky started moving again. Emma ran to the window as fast as could be to see if the sun had returned to her tree. Oh, Daddy, come look at this wonderful sight. All the colors I love. You must have been right. What a wonderful gift. It's from God, I just know. He has sent me a beautiful birthday rainbow. It was just for a time, then the sun went away, and the clouds on the apple tree stayed for the day. But she splashed in the puddles again and again with Princess and Teddy and all her best friends. Did the boy see the rainbow? The man in his corn? Did the ducks see my present reflect in their pond? And thank you, dear Daddy, for helping me know whether sunshine or puddles, God loves me so. Well, hi, Cubby. Did you come to tell the boys and girls goodbye? I'm so glad. It's fun on the nights when Cubby decides to come. He was listening to the story while we read it. And here he is. Cubby, did you have a good day? Yay, he's given us a thumbs up. Let's see, what else could we ask Cubby? Did you get all your homework done? Ah, good boy, that's good. And did you eat a healthy supper? No! Oh my goodness, we're going to have to get on that tomorrow. Well, Cubby came to say hi to you because I'm sure you miss him, so wave goodbye. Thanks for coming, Cubby.